Rambo, Last Blood, a new entry. Is it better than Dora and the Lost City of Gold? No. I mean, I haven't seen Dora and the Lost City of Gold, but I can tell you with some confidence that Rambo, Last Blood isn't better than it. I will refer you once again, and I'm sorry if people have heard this, but back in 1998-99, I chased Sylvester Stallone around the Cannes Film Festival in order to get an interview with him for... Um, Copland, which he had just made, and good film. it was yes, it was a good film. It was a shame that I'd spent such a long time attempting to get him before finally cornering him in a car park. Um, I didn't stalk him. This was all set up by the PR people. And the thing that I remember is that, that Sylvester Stallone was talking about that his, you know, he was basically now doing a different kind of role. And he said, "Well, I couldn't ever do another Rambo movie," and I quote, "because that would just be stupid." So, anyway, several Rambo movies later, now we have Rambo Lost Blood, which is just horrible. Um, mm. As people quite rightly say, it's a film which basically kind of acts like a, an advert for Trump's border wall policy. It's a film in which there is, if you need to know what the violence is specifically, look on the BBFC website, but it's all there in its, you know, in its kind of grisly nastiness. There is nothing good about the filmmaking, but perhaps the best condemnation of it. I mean, I sat there just thinking, OK, this is just really depressingly poor and badly made. But uh, David Morrell, who wrote the original book that the first Rambo was uh, written on, has taken to Twitter to say, I agree with the Rambo Last Blood reviews, which have been universally negative, despite the fact there's a trailer that says, hey, the reviews are great. No, they're, no, they're not. Uh, it says, the film is a mess. I'm embarrassed to have my name associated with it. I hated it. It's dull, degrading, filled with post-it note stereotypes. Waterworld is a masterpiece compared to this. That's the guy who wrote the book that began this character. And I kind of think, well, there we go. Look no further than somebody who... And the worst thing about it is that that I really did think all those years ago when Stallone said, I'm not doing any more of this because that would be stupid. And you think about what's happened to the Rocky franchise. It's been reinvented brilliantly. I mean, the whole Creed reinvention of Rocky is amazing. But Rambo has just gone, like the Death Wish movies, the very first Death Wish, or the source, the source material of Death Wish, was kind of interesting, and then it just went down, 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 down. This is just meat-headed nonsense. Dino Goldie in Bath. Even Clint Eastwood's Gran Torino had more heart and brains than this. I like Gran Torino. Mumbling, misogynistic mess. Ultimately, it's a movie as futile and fruitless as the revenge sought by the eponymous one-man army. <clears throat> Daniel Bell. In Sirencester, I was genuinely excited for this as First Blood was the first video we hired when my dad came home one day with a newfangled VHS player many years ago and this trailer looked to be going back to the film's roots. Unfortunately, the film proved to be closer to a further chapter in another well-known and loved franchise. Nursing Home Alone may have been a better title. When the action finally came, it was so rushed it became cartoon-like and unwittingly passed the sixth laugh test, especially the failed Logan-esque ending. The good lady hated it so much, I have to watch Downton Abbey this weekend as punishment. It is worth saying in that Home Alone thing that basically the last act of the film is essentially Home Alone with more violence in it. But none of the wit, none of the chutzpah. More tunnels as well. The two things he seems to be interested in are horses and tunnels. Does a horse ever go down the tunnel? Well, that would be a plot spoiler, wouldn't it, Simon? <laughs> oh, I see. Fair enough. OK, so yes, then. Um, and Daniel, by the way, going to watch Downton Abbey as punishment, the chances are, you know, I think I sp speak for everybody, saying Downton Abbey is a much better film yeah, than, uh, an, than, than, than Rambo. Anything that Rambo, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> it's, so. it's, it's really, it's grim. Uh, Scott Brown went to see Rambo Last Blood yesterday. I was buoyed by my love for the franchise to the, and the surprise delight I took from the fourth instalment around 10 years ago, but also with a sense of trepidation at how Sly, in his advancing years, would manage to pull this off. Was the fourth one John Rambo? Well, there was another one that was just called Rambo again. It was, you know, carry on. Uh, I, yes. Okay, no, carry on. I can't even remember which one it was. I needn't have worried as I really enjoyed this. The violence is strong, grisly, and certainly earns its 18 certificate. The action is loud, crashy and smashy, and Stallone is at his indecipherable best. At one point, a line is delivered by Sylvester Stallone in his co-star actually says, what? I would possibly uh, have enjoyed it more if it had remained a Rambo movie for the duration, but what I got was a first act of a Rambo movie, which then changed to a Death Wish movie for the second part and then became Home Alone, Alone. for the grand finale. Yeah, which it does. If the trap set by Kevin McAllister had consequences that were anatomically and biologically accurate... I thought it was great fun, but it's certainly an acquired taste. Can I say, I'd like to quote my grand, great colleague, Wendy Ide, who described Stallone perfectly when she said, it's like watching a live boiled ham. Oh dear, that's quite... Dis with, with string? <laughs> oh dear. With fat floating to the surface and filling the house. 
with unpleasant smells. Uh, Rambo is at four.